Now we're going to set up a rigid body simulation with a whole bunch of soccer balls uh, and add this eventually back into our Solaris um, set of shots. So first we're going to go back to the build desktop. Uh, we've got to make sure our path is right, so our go to OBJ. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hide some of the things we already have uh, and set things up for the simulation. So the soccer ball, the animated soccer ball, we're just going to hide all of those elements. Um, we're going to bring back the soccer ball geo for a second uh, and hide that extracted object. So now we've got the soccer ball geo. We're going to do a second extraction of just the single soccer ball sitting there. Uh, and that's going to what we're going to use to build our network with. And uh, we can bring that over and call that soccer ball sim as opposed to soccer ball geo. And hide the other one. Now when we go in there, um, what we want to do is center this around the origin. So what we can do is put in another match size, but this time we'll center it around the origin. Now actually when I recorded this, I you're going to see I put the match size in and then I actually, instead of just leaving it at the origin, which is what I should have done, um, I went and put minimum again. But that wasn't what I meant to do. It doesn't really matter, um, but the point of this was supposed to be to center it, um, if you follow the instructions in the booklet. Uh, now we put a box in, and this box is going to be used to copy uh, the soccer ball to, so we're going to put the center up at 8, um, and we see it up there, and we're going to change its size, um, its rotation to 45, 45, 45, and its uniform scale to 6. And let's do uh, 3, 3, 3 for the axis division. So that gives us a, a lot of points to throw soccer balls onto. Now the next thing is to get the soccer balls um, onto the box. Let's rename the box back to box. Uh, we're going to use a copy to point node. So that node, uh, you just go tab, copy to points. There we go. And then we're going to wire the match size into one side and the box into the other and set the display flag. Uh, once we have that, we can pack an instance. That makes it more efficient. It's more like inst uh, an instancing solution always works a little bit better for these kinds of things. And now we're going to put down a mountain node in between to sort of jiggle the points on the box. And that will just allow us to... Just, just so it doesn't look so even when the simulation begins. Now we're going to be able to run that simulation right here in the geometry level by typing RBD uh, bullet solver. and We're going to put this solver right here. We're going to wire the first input into the um, or the output into the first input, set the display flag. Now, The first thing we need to set up is a collision surface. We want to set the ground plane as a collision surface. It creates a sort of invisible and inf infinite ground plane there. Uh, and we can press play and see how that's working. Now, it doesn't seem to be a lot of life to the, the objects as it falls, uh, so we can do some tweaking to get make it look a little bit better. First thing we can do is make the ground itself um, a little bouncier, so instead of having point 0.8 or point 0.5, we're going to go up to point 0.8. And then the next thing is to go to the properties of the, the soccer balls themselves, lower the density, and increase the... We're going to go with the bounce of 1.1, so it's it's got energy to it. Uh, and then when we we go up here and press reset simulation. We can press play, and you'll see that once they hit the ground and off each other, they got some really nice energy to them. Something that you often see with um, with sports balls like this. So now that we have that and it's doing what we want, um, just like we did with the animation, we want to do a USD export out. So we're going to put that down, feed that in, and. What we're going to do is do the same sort of settings. So we're going to go soccer ball sim. It's good to name this export node because that affects um, what this looks like when it comes in later. We're going to do render frame range 1 to 120. Um, and we're going to change the name of this to USD. And again, one file even if it's animated. So it'll be soccer ball underscore sim dot USD. And uh, once we press 
saved a disk on this, you'll see that um, there's a blue bar in the, in the play bar. There's a blue line that basically indicates that everything's been cached. So when you press save to disk, it's going to be quite fast because you've already simulated it, you've already cached it, and you're ready to go. So that's good to see. So once we have that, we're ready to get back into Solaris where we're going to create a third shot from that. So let's go back to the object level, go to the stage level, and uh, let's start branching off. So we can start to reuse some of the nodes we have here like we did before. We're going to alt drag the reference node over and this time uh, we'll just change that to go get the sim instead. And If we set the display flag on that, uh, you see we lost our textures again, we lost our camera, uh, but uh, we do have the animation in here um, ready to play and to work with. So just like before, we're going to want to rebuild some of that stuff. Uh, let's start by renaming this soccer ball sim. And then we're going to want to, um, and um, probably should have renamed named the first one soccer ball anim just to make them easy to find within the network. So now we're going to bring the assigned material node over with an alt drag again. Uh, alt and drag that over. And once we've got th that sim in, uh, we see that there's something missing because, and all we could need to do is change that to SIM, and there you go, the materials are now on the soccer ball. So uh, the namespace is enough for you to make the changes. You don't have to always do a selection thing to get that to work. Now, once we're in this situation, we can um, tumble around and reestablish the camera. So, what we're going to do is get to here, and once we've got that working, uh, go back to frame one, get a feeling for that. That seems to be where we want the camera to be. We're going to add another camera in by clicking the camera tool. And this will create camera three, which, um, and we'll have to zoom in a little bit here. It, it didn't quite work the way we wanted, uh, but we lock the camera, zoom in, and then we can unlock it after. Now, once we have that, uh, we want to bring the other elements in. So again, we're going to do light mixer. Um, so we're going to use the existing lights which are higher up in the chain and we're going to bring them into the mix and set them up accordingly. Um, so it's nice that you can reuse a sort of a base lighting setup uh, and then it's just a matter of making the tweaks and so on you need for each different shot that you're working on. So in this case here, um, you know, just like we did before, we can set up, um, you know, maybe use specular to highlight certain points, uh, pick this light, and maybe this time we use the shadow again. We go there and shift to make the, where the shadow goes. Uh, maybe try over there. Anyway, you can begin to explore and do a whole bunch of different things in the lighting, um, just like we've done with the other shots to get what you want. You can also maybe bump up some of the lights a little bit more, um, get some more intensity to that. Maybe one of those lights just really go 800 and get a lot stronger with that. Now, you know, currently we're not looking at it through Karma, so you know we'll probably get more realistic idea of, of this if we go there. So I'm going to change some of the lights there, um, and just keep tweaking until you get sort of the the thing that you're looking for. Maybe this shot could be have a, a stronger ambient light throughout the whole thing. Um, or maybe we go to the sliders and we say, what's the contribution of this? Oh, that's what we had. We had the contribution locked, so that's why it wasn't quite coming out the way we wanted. So what we probably want to do is take that dome light and um, pump that down a little bit, you know, really pump that down, and then maybe take the middle light, which has the stronger contribution, and, and bump that up. Um, probably better to use exposure would be a little more drastic. Now it's got it's got good light there. Um, there we go. That's looking good. So there we go. So just like we did before, you get some particular lighting set up for each of the shots that you're working on. And once you've got that, then it's just a matter of going in and bringing over the uh, last three nodes to create shot number three and have Karma render settings ready to go. Now in this case here, um, we probably want to change uh, this sequence, the camera to camera three. You've got to do that first. That's the most important thing. And then we're going to change this to say sim and 
soccer ball sim and there we go and once we have that ready uh, we can send off the render uh, so we do the uh, first check the camera yeah we just want to get a little closer for that so let's let's get that camera a little closer and then once we've done that uh, we can go to our render output settings go to our ROP and we just press render to disk it'll start rendering it just like before we gotta wait that through and we fade away and we come back and now we can go to render load disk files and under render we're gonna find those files uh, sim and bring those up and there we go so now we have a r third rendered shot of the RBD simulation of the soccer balls so you've come quite away with this whole project from modeling the soccer ball animating it simulating it doing all the lighting everything so I hope you've had a fun time with this lesson and that you've uh, got a good introduction to what Houdini has to offer thank you